Welcome to Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol McCarthy with Terry Khalil from the League of Women Voters, uh, the local chapter. We're on stage here at the Historic Homes Theater. As you see, we have the flag behind us, and we're entering into the uh, election 2012 season, which is a stage uh, that uh, lots of politicians will be on. And the League of Women Voters hosts a lot of candidate forums mm -hmm. that you'll be hearing about in the coming months and weeks. And I've asked Terry to join me today because you know, with all these elections going on and, you know, knowing who the candidates are, I thought she could give us an idea of what actually, once the officials are elected, what do they actually do? <laughs> I'll do my best. Right. Thank you for having me. So, Terry, one of the things that we will walk through today is, you know, if I'm a citizen, a voter, and I have an issue, you know, who is the best person to contact? And let's use as an example of an issue that you also work with uh, very closely mm -hmm. is the Aquatic Invasive Science. Species. That's a good question. And I, I think the first thing to know is there are two levels, federal and state, well, and, and local. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that either. I think, so you have to think about the issue in terms of how do I know if it's a state issue, a local issue. On the issue of aquatic invasive species, it's actually every level. Mm -hmm. For example, the city of Detroit Lakes owns several accesses on Detroit Lakes itself. So those are under, under city jurisdiction, but there's also one access that's state owned. So that involves legislators. But if you're on Floyd Lake, for example, or out on Island Lake, those are under county jurisdiction. So if I'm concerned about zebra mussels on Island Lake, I'm going to talk to our county commissioner for that district. If I'm concerned about the city needs to do more to protect the public beach, then I want to talk to the city commissioners. Now, to take it a step further, I want the legislature to do more. I think there should be stiffer penalties for violating the law. That means I need to talk to Kent Eakin and Paul Marquardt, our representatives in the State House, Senator Keith Langseth and Rod Skoy also represent Medicare County in the State Senate. They have a lot of, they get to vote on those penalties because those are statewide and enforced by the DNR. Now let's talk about the next level, which is Asian carp have been discovered in Minnesota in the Mississippi River. They have been caught, so it's confirmed. Last week, one of our Becker County citizens was in Washington, D.C., meeting with our legislative delegation because just yesterday, a bill was introduced by Senator Amy Klobuchar and others to get more work done to protect the Mississippi and stop Asian carp from moving upstream. So on one topic, aquatic invasive species, you've got city, you've got county, you've got the state legislature, and now we've got the federal authorities all involved. That's just one topic. It's a lot of people to know who to contact, and that is finding out who is a tough issue. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about each level of government, you know, that each level has their jurisdiction, like you said, and I know that there's been a lot of talk about redistricting and, and that sort of thing, but, you know, um, as far as Asian carp goes, uh, what does that have to affect? I mean, yes, it's in the Missis they're in the Mississippi mm -hmm. River, but I know when it gets to the federal level, level they deal with more of the national issue. Correct. So, how does that affect the United States as a whole, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know why wouldn't that just be a state issue? It's a federal issue in part because the federal government controls the Mississippi River, the locks, the dams which is where we need to stop Asian carp, that is under the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are just two of probably many agencies involved. That's why that's federal. But zebra mussels are a statewide issue because all of Minnesota's waters, every lake is owned by the state of Minnesota, managed by the Department of Natural Resources. That makes zebra mussels a state issue, while carp is a federal issue. Okay. All right. We're trying to work on clarifying things as we head into the election. Uh, you know, uh, we we 
focus a lot on candidates and mm -hmm. you know who's running against who during this time period but actually what uh, what do they do once they're elected and what are their what's their jurisdiction we're trying to solve some of these uh, make it a little bit more clear for you today on hometown happenings I'm here with Terry Khalil from the League of Women Voters yes. uh, the local chapter we're going to hear more about the league and about uh, maybe some of the election the election season coming up when we return on hometown happenings Welcome back to Hometown Happenings. Carol McCarthy here with Terry Khalil today talking about, uh, well, about the election coming up, about candidates, but more about what candidates do and how you as a citizen can contact those who are elected to do their job. Mm -hmm. And uh, Terry, you know, we talked a little bit about kind of the, took it through the uh, the aquatic invasive species issue, how the different levels of government work, um, and you mentioned some names. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about, um, you know, who represents us here in Minnesota, us in Detroit Lakes, uh, Becker County? First of all, it all depends on where you live. If you are within the city limits of Detroit Lakes, it's represented by a mayor and a council. Some council people are members are elected at large, others are represented by wards, and you vote for someone in your ward. On the county level, there are five county commissioners, each with a district, and um, they handle everything that's, whether it's county roads, county social services, property taxes, uh, the Sheriff's Department, all those kinds of, kinds of services are under the county. Then when we talk about at the state level, Becker County historically has been divided into three state congressional districts. Generally, the western part of the county represented by Representative Paul Marquart and Senator Keith Langseth. The eastern part of the county represented by Senator Rod Skoy and Representative Kent Eakin. A very small portion in the southeastern part of the county last time around got paired with Otter Tail County and there were six townships that are currently represented, represented by Senator Gretchen Hoffman from Vergas and Representative Paul Marquardt from the Perm area. So dividing up Becker County depends again on which township you live in. Of course, on the federal level, we've got two U.S. Senators, Al Franken and Amy Klobuchar, and we've got eight members of the House of Representatives. We're in the seventh congressional district represented by Colin Peterson from Detroit Lakes. Okay, so how would be the best way to go about contacting those people or find the, you know, if, you're, if you don't, are unsure, you know, what district you lie in, what township mm -hmm. you're in, uh, what, uh, what ward in the city you're in, what would be the best thing to do? The League of Women Voters has a website, www.vote411.org. What you do when you go to 411.org is you put in your home address. It will tell you who all of your elected officials are. It will tell you where you vote coming up in August in the Minnesota primary election and in November. And it will tell you who all the candidates are at every level. That's a good place to start. If you don't want to start there, you can call City Hall and ask, are you responsible for County Road 26? And they'll say, no, that's county. I mean, that's kind of an obvious example. But let's say you have a health care issue or an elder care issue. Is it city or is it county? Start in the phone book and look and see if they have human services, mm -hmm. for example, or highway um, or law enforcement. Worst case, pick up the phone and call the general number. They'll certainly tell you and they know where to refer you. Okay, excellent. Terry Khalil is from the local chapter of the League of Women Voters, and we're getting some information about who to contact if you have an issue. You know, these are elected, fish, elected officials, which we will be voting on uh, this right. coming November, so it's good to know who they are, what their job is, uh, who your specific representatives are, and hopefully we've clarified a few things <laughs> for you. <laughs> and of course, be on the lookout for uh, League of Women Voter uh, forums coming up. We will be doing a full slate of candidate forums both before the August primary, if interest is warranted and there aren't enough candidates to have primaries, but certainly we will have a great many before the elections in November at all levels. All right, Terry, thank you so much. Thank you. For TV3 Hometown Happenings, I'm Carol McCarthy.